don't think it hasn't occurred to me that these sort of mental, like, thought experiments that trend towards overwhelming economy, uh, they, they're kind of my thing. It's what I gravitate towards. So anyone who followed through the build process of the Vanimal here knows that it has a Rude Dog Crawler 550 in the 16-turn 5-slot variant. And it's a very smooth motor. Uh, it was very inexpensive. Uh, like I said, I think it was around $23. Which, going into what's going to happen now, makes it, I think the most expensive motor in this test. So I had initially thought I'm just going to do 550s. But then I started digging through my bins and searching through Amazon, and it turns out that there's a lot of cheap 540s in there as well. So we are going to start with, these are the 540s that will be in the test. This is a Hobby Park 55 turn brushed from Amazon. Looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know how hot it's actually going to get. A 55 turn is not exactly an aggressive motor. It should have a significant amount of drag brake for a 550, for a 540, I mean, uh, being 55 turn. Second to that is deep from within the parts crate, a legit original Mabuchi RS540SH, which if memory served, Mabuchi's are somewhere around a 23 turn. So, I mean, that's relatively crawler appropriate. This one is kind enough to have the good old Tamiya uh, green and yellow wires on it. And if you're going to have a Mabuchi 540RS, you must have the Mabuchi RS540 Sport Tuned actually sold by Tamiya. I think these go for about 17, 18 bucks. Um, I've had this one since I had my last Tamiya. I've sold some Tamiyas in my day. Then we move on to a, so it's just the three 540s. And then we move on to a selection of 550s. As I mentioned, the Rude Dog is in here. You'll notice some definite commonalities between the motors uh, going from the uh, I, I, I would say the lowest which is the highest turn uh, Holmes crawl master sport 558 turn which is pretty hot even for a five slot uh, it's a fairly big jump from there I guess next in the order would be the venerable Traxxas Titan stock motor out of a TRX-4. That one's been in the bin for a while. You can get those super cheap, maybe even cheaper than the Hobby Park. Uh, next up in the turns list, Apex RC Products brush motor. This is a 27 turn, three slot. Um, luckily, it's got wires on it. Uh, you'll notice this can is going to repeat quite a bit. The little plastic pinches there on the can. Uh, you'll notice pretty much the same thing. They got them in a slightly different can on the Holmes. Then we jump up to uh, a Surpass 35 turn, which I'm, I'm guessing is these are the exact same mode. Just one is a 27 and one is a 35. Uh, either way, both were under $20. I guess the, the most legit motor in the test, Trailmaster Sport 550 27 turn, uh, another one that needs bullets soldered onto it. Unless some sort of surprise flies in out of left field, that's probably going to be the motor that that goes in here and stays in here. And the the oddball, the motor that required the most work, I had to get the file and go at it to take the swage lines off. 
and then I had to machine a flat onto it to take a conventional pinion gear because this uses swaged 10 tooth pinions. This is the drive motor for like a power wheels. Um, I'm sure some of you know, but some of you may not. Uh, the like Barbie Jeeps and Corvettes and stuff that kids drive around in the yard. This is what they run on a, a, a good old, a good old 550. Uh, you'll notice, I mean, there's not a lot of difference between what comes stock in a TRX-4 and what comes in a Barbie Jeep. So I have no idea what order I should test these in. I just know that I need to solder leads on, oh, just three. Got to solder leads on three of them. Oh, and I have to solder bullets onto the motor in this guy. And then it will be a, uh, unfortunately, let's grab this real quick. Unfortunately, the easiest way to remove the motor once it's installed here in the Charisma is to take these screws out and take the two bottom screws out and just lift the whole transmission up to get to the screws more easily. I'm going to see if maybe I can't uh, get some extensions on my drill to maybe reach it all the way from the back so that I don't have to take the transmission out 10 times. But uh, I realize now that's that's a definite possibility. They will all be tested on the good old 1500 3Ss, either Z or the CNHL Black Series. Uh, the way the testing is going to break down is I'm going to do the dial up throttle trim uh, and just have them creep and I will have a, a slope creep to see what kind of just general torque we're getting. Uh, I'm going to do just a selection uh, on basically like driver feel uh, to give my opinion on how each different motor feels. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the gearing. They are all going to run on the exact same low C 14 tooth pinion to try to keep things evened out a little. So obviously the eight turn 550 is going to be a little more brisk than the Hobby Park 55 turn. But drag brake is a big part of it. Throttle smoothness is a big part of it. And then it won't be filmed. I might film one, but there'll just be some numbers. Uh, I, I kind of want to torture them. So I'll, I'll, I'll get them refined down. And when we get to like, what I would call the finalists, uh, around my big track that is on the inside of the crawler course. I'm going to do like five minutes, three minutes or five minutes at wide open throttle and then temp the motors to see if any of them even get warm. I'm sure three minutes might get this around, I don't know, two, maybe three times, but I'll get bullets soldered on and I'll get the others soldered on here and cut my zip ties that have been on there for one day. And then we'll get on to test. I'll, I'll do five forties first and we'll get on to testing these one by one to see what's your best option in a sub 25, let's call it $25 cap because, uh, I think one or two of these was like $23, but the, uh, replacement motor for your power wheels, uh, 13 bucks. 13 bucks for that one. The Hobby Park was like 15. I had both of these, but I think a regular RS, I think I've seen these 12, $13. And like I say, 18 for the Sport Tuned. The, the only issue I'm going to have with the Sport Tuned is look how short that output shaft is. I mean, come on, Tamiya. Uh, it's the opposite spectrum here. That's, that's a lot of shaft. So I'll do some soldering. I'll do some unbolting and we'll get this thing out there. Remember, I do these kind of things so no one else has to. I'm saving you all from yourselves and sacrificing myself in your place. I've got the bullets on the 1080. I've got the bullets all soldered on the murderer's row here. Uh, I cobbled together heat shrink and a couple extensions. I can, uh, I can reach the motor mount from the outside. I got my wrench ready because uh, I don't know if they still are. I don't think so. But at this time, low C pinions still use standard 
That's a 16th. Uh, I think I'm going to do them roughly in this order. I'll do the 540s from what I assume is going to be the slowest to the quickest. And then we'll start with the Titan, then the 27 Apex, the 27 Holmes, the 35 Surpass, the 5 Slot Rude Dog, the 5 Slot uh, Crawl Master 8 Turn, and then the Power Wheels Motor. I'll just kind of go in that order. And yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready. The Vanimal, still dirty from the last video. Where's that charger? We'll put this over here, just in the in the round file there. That's good. All right, so uh, let's get the first one in there. Slap the hobby park in there, and uh, see how she do. First up is of course the hobby park, fifty-five turn, five forty, and I realize. Uh, a 14 tooth pinion, probably wildly undergeared for a 55 turn, but we have to maintain some sort of semblance of consistency. So I can say already, I'm giving it a decent amount of throttle input and then it just kind of jumps. So it's not the smoothest low speed thing I can feel just right here. But we have to get it up on the testing apparatus to really see what it's like. I will also zero out any sort of throttle curves or anything in here so that we've got just an even baseline to go from. Maybe I have the curve dialed too soft because I felt this, the guy who was in there before was too punchy. And maybe this guy needs a little more punch. He's 55 turns. So uh, let's do that and get it onto the first test apparatus. All right, here is the Hobby Park 55 turn. Uh, the angle of the ramp is close enough to may as well be 40 degrees. The angle on the bottom is cut to 40 degrees. I'm hoping that where it's sitting, I didn't measure it. Uh, I just know that the rig can climb it. So, give a little tip in. Tail gets hung up a little. No problem going up. Drag brake check. Um, it's about what you'd expect from a 540. A small application of throttle will stop it. Let's let it roll down to the bottom and then we'll dial in throttle trim. Let's see where we have to get to where we can get a slow creep. All right, slow creep at half. So 54 out of 100 and then down to 50. Looks like 46, you can kind of hear it squeal in there. 46 will hold it. We've got it stuck on the bumper here. I, I think that might be a little too much uh, forward throttle. But it holds with the throttle at 46. Just going to pivot around to see how it feels. This is the most subjective portion. How does the throttle feel? I mean, it's a 55 turn, so it should feel smooth. And it does. But uh, out in the, in the wild world, the, the drag brake is almost non-existent. And getting a little hold there. It's got, it's got a decent amount of torque, as, as it should. But it just does not have enough to hold, see, on its wheels all the time. I know I, I shouldn't be restricting reviewing to just drag brake. 
Try to get a little more side angle here. Yeah, low speed control is definitely better on rock than it was when I was testing it on the bench. Let's try it. Let's see what we can do with a bump. The bump is very controllable uh, because the motor is so high turn. It's it's all torque and no RPM. Uh, I think the camera's probably set in a spot where we... Like, that's 50% reverse. There's full speed. Full speed is probably two and a half miles an hour. I have to say, though, it feels, you know... For a $15 motor, it feels good. Uh, I think you would have to have a rig very light. I mean, it's clear and slick rock, no problem. Those good old landmines and a lot of torque. There's a lot to be said for having a lot of torque. And as I mentioned, I mean, I think you could gear a 55 turn to the moon. And be all right with it. So now I will uh, run, uh, run it around the loop. I probably do three minutes. I'll do three minutes around the loop, temp it, see how the motor's sitting. How does it like being wide open for three straight minutes? I mean, it doesn't. It, it's not going to affect anything if you blow up a fifteen-dollar motor. I don't think I even looked to see if this thing would handle three as. Look at that, straight up. Uh, I didn't even look to see if this motor was rated for 3S. I said, 15 bucks? Yeah, we'll take one of those. So time to do the Lupta, and then I'll talk about it a little more, and then we'll uh, move on to one of those Mabuchis. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, the motor is ambient temperature. Yeah, there's no, there's no temperature in that at all. And uh, that's not entirely surprising, to be honest. Uh, the lap is 220 feet, and it was taking this thing about 55 seconds. So we'll call that, what, 125th of a mile? So it would take over 20 minutes to do a mile. So under three miles an hour, definitely under three miles an hour. Uh, it's smooth. Wow, look, you take that van off. Yow. Let me recenter that camera. All right, with, with no van on the Charisma SCA-1E, you don't, like, yeah, see, it's got enough drag brake for four pounds. So if your rig is in the four pound region, uh, the hobby park, not, I mean, definitely not a bad option. I think if that, I think if that motor was a 550, we, we would have something like a 35 turn 550 and we'll be testing a 35 turn 550. So we will see. Uh, that is that is not a bad motor. I, I I don't really have any complaints to make about it. It is far too slow, but I think I could gear it. I could probably put as big of a pinion as will fit on there, and it would be fine. Because on 3S, we're looking at two and a half miles an hour. So hopefully I have enough daylight to get a Mabuchi in there so I can do it test at least one of the Mabuchis. Uh, I'm already also getting the feeling this video is going to be more than one. Uh, th this will be a series. will be more than one part. Looks like there maybe maybe three parts for this because I don't know. I can't stop talking. But I'm going to run this in and uh, slap into Mabuchi. All right, on to the Mabuchi. This is not the to me, a sport tune. This is just a regular Mabuchi RS540, and uh, I will tell you, it is a. <laughs> it, it might be a. It might be a little zippy. Um, let's see how it does on brake. 
Uh, yeah, base almost almost has none. Definitely got some wheel speed though. Um, I feel like 14 tooth might be over geared for this. Like I said, I think it's around a 23 turn. Let's crank up some forward drive, see where we have to get. Oh, not far. Yeah, I gotta get all the way down to a 40 to stop forward motion. Uh, even lower. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I think, I think a stock Mabuchi, I think, I think you might be able to dial it, but I don't know if you could get a pinion small enough. Just sliding away there. All right, let's dial that out. And then let's just pan straight over here. Get some, get some rock feel here. Slow speed control is not bad. And to be honest, the, the forward torque feels about the same as the hobby park. So, I mean, who's to say that hobby park is actually 55 turns? We, we don't know. It does, it did have more drag brake, not substantially more, and much more low speed control. The, the fine point control in this is not as good. Forward torque is fine. Like, if, if those wheels can find bite, the Mabuchi will drive it up. I mean, that's doing three wheel motion. Let's try hops. Oh, it's definitely, it's definitely got some hop to it. Not surprisingly, as it's about a 23 turn. Like. Cannot do that with a 55. I mean, it feels, it feels good. Now I'm really anxious to see the sport tune. It's, it's too fast. For, for this gearing in this gearbox, it, it feels too fast. Definitely got some good controllable pop to it, though. So I wouldn't rule out, uh, you know, the, the venerable Mumbuchi RS540. There's, there's a million of them out there. And uh, it's pretty drivable. Uh... Some with portal axles, more reduction. Uh, this may be fine. I'm not sure where 23 turns comes uh, in KV equivalency. Does not. I mean, for just for me, it it doesn't have enough brake. But okay, let's let's do a little impromptu experiment here. Let's put about. 20 clicks of forward throttle. See, not enough to make it move. So that's going to hurt my initial tip in because it's like it's having more throttle. Let's see what that does to the brake. It doesn't really change it very much. We got to do we got to go more? Let's try 30. Yeah, see now it's really zingy. I might be able to potentially curve that out. But yeah, it's very zippy. I don't think this thing has rolled over and not landed on its wheels once since I started driving it. Wow, I mean... This motor's got some zoom. But hey, uh, 30 clicks of forward trim, and we have nearly brushless levels of drag brake like it'll just hold that's got some hill hold right there uh, I don't know if you could trim out 
the amount of zoom that it's got in it. The controllability is just barely there with no trim put in because it's just it's just so fast. I'm not 100% sure, as I said, what the RPM of this, because I'm 100% sure that the, you know, in its day, the RS540 was a 2S motor. This is a, this is a six cell motor. So on 3S, it's got too much zip. But going down a cell isn't going to help the braking. So uh, we'll run it around. We'll do our three minutes and uh, see if any heat gets in this one at all, seeing as I know for a fact this one's a 2S motor. So uh, we'll see where she sits. Got it. Um, nothing. That's 75 degrees. And the pinion's pretty hot, about 85 on the pinion. So uh, I think we don't have to do this anymore. I don't think I have to uh, run them because... I don't think they're gonna get hot. So that's gonna save me, you know, like half an hour. Uh, that was, uh, the, 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 the RS540 was running 26 second laps. So over twice as fast as the Hobby Park, which is to be expected. See, not as, but you'll notice here, a little bit of wheel hopping not just as straight up to the top as it was with the Hobby Park. So yeah, the Hobby Park had a little bit more brake to it, available brake, and it felt a little smoother low end. This one takes a bit more finesse on the trigger to get the same level of low speed control, but you know, it's brushed and it's a sealed cannon. It's a 540, so it's, it's pretty smooth and it definitely has more bump. You can definitely bump a Mabuchi. So if I had to pick a winner between those two, well, it's the Hobby Park. I mean, uh, maybe sacrifice, take two, sacrifice the Mabuchi, take the rotor out and put the rotor in the Hobby Park. Although, let's, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this in this uh, rapidly failing light. The pinion shaft, uh, there it is, is so short that that pinion is on there by sheer force of will. Like, it is barely on there. That shaft is so short and you can only mount the pinion this way on this particular rig. It's definitely got some wheel speed. And it is quiet. I mean, it's a smooth motor. It's got a nice low tip in. And as I've said, they're so inexpensive, uh, they, they border on free. I've had this one for years. I got this one in a TT-01 that I was using for a drift car ages ago. So aside from the exact sort of drive, drag brake performance that you would expect from a sealed can 540 relatively low turn motor, uh, not bad. The Hobby Park was pretty good. This guy's pretty good. Um, let me spin this guy around real quick. Um, we're, we're brewing a beautiful sunset that uh, hopefully I can get that other 540 uh, mounted up and run before it's just flat out dark. So come on, RS540, let's head back and replace you with your presumably better brother and see how that goes. Here in the last of the daylight is the Tamiya Sport Tuned, which uh, does announce itself as being a 23 turn. Uh, just driving it here from the shop to the test, I can tell you 
I'm pretty sure the RS540 is a 27 turn, because this guy has got zoot. He also really does feel smoother. Like, you've got some real low speed control. And the drag brake has gotten worse. But the low speed control on this one is the best yet. So I guess sport tuned isn't, uh, it's not ad hype. Yeah, and it's definitely hotter. We've got holding at 38, forward motion at 40. Yeah, the others wouldn't hold like that until 46, 48, which leads me to believe it's supposed to be more turns, more torque. But this guy is definitely the lowest turn yet. And he definitely appears to have the most forward torque. Drag brake is the poorest. He's basically just rolling away. But let's see how we're looking in terms of drivability because he is very brisk. I mean, honestly, with a little bit of throttle curve dialed in, I've got to be pretty soft on the trigger finger. But I mean, bump-wise, Uh, this guy could just leapfrog to the top. Motor's definitely got some zip. I mean, I think these were for some sort of Tamiya spec class racing, you know, sealed can motors. It definitely has more RPM than I would specifically want. I think I'm going to I'm going to run it around the 220 foot once just to see what kind of time it gets compared to the 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 standard edition Mabuchi 540. Uh with some throttle curve dialed in, this would definitely be drivable. Always on its wheels. But uh It's, it's, got, it's got too much. Uh, 23 turn is definitely too spicy for my tastes. But I can't, uh, I can't call an outright winner or loser of the, the 540s. I think they were all pretty good. I would say the Hobby Park probably wins just on the paper tech specs being a rebuildable motor with a nice big long output shaft to, to screw down any pinion you want onto it. Uh, both of the, the Mabuchis, that shaft is so short. I, I mean, I, I could use like a Robinson pinion and probably because it'd be a little shallower and it would fit a little better. But, uh, yeah, this, this motor is peppy. I mean, it's essentially a drift car motor. So the fact it does as well as it does, I'm now really looking forward to seeing the 550s. Let's run this around the 220 and then uh, take a look at it. But to me, a sport tuned uh, cleared the 220 foot in just over 21 seconds, about five seconds faster than the uh, regular 540. And uh, 
almost three times as fast as the 55 turn, but that's not what we're here for. The low speed control is definitely there. I, I, I have to say the sport tuned is smoother than the regular 540. But you could see the, the regular 540 would hold with the body off. And this one definitely will not. It's really got some creepability though. I wonder if out there there's a Tamiya Sport Tune 35 turn. That would be that would be amazing. This this motor, uh, I have no complaints. I guess now I need to build some sort of super light rig and put this motor in it because. You would think the low speed would be much worse than it is at 23 turns. But look at that go. Needs a two speed with a very low low. Yeah, this is not a bad motor at all. For $18, this is a tremendous motor. I think I'm most... I think in just terms of just the intangible, in terms of pure driver feel, I think I'm giving it to the to me a sport tuned. This motor feels good. Like you can pick your lines. It it drives good. I don't regret the initial $18 purchase of that guy at all. So there are the suspects from the first round of testing, the 540s. Uh, the most expensive of which, $18. Uh, this one like $15. This one, you can get them $10, $12. Uh, Honestly, if you've been to RC for a while, you probably have a Mabuchi RS540 sitting around somewhere. Uh, I expected there to be some sort of winner between the three. Uh, the Hobby Park does have bearings. Obviously, these are big bronze oil bushings, front and rear. What, what would we expect? But, you know, if you're going to go jumping in puddles or something... Uh, I would probably lean towards one of these two. That way, when it gets fouled and blows up, you don't really care. They all worked well. Uh, end of the day, this is too slow for me. And these are both too fast. This guy's a little faster than this. I still think this is... A, I mean, I'll probably look it up at some point if I remember... Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a 27 turn and this is a 23. So as I was driving it back, I got to thinking, we got an 83 tooth on here and we're running 1483. Drop that down to like 1290, 1190, something like that. This might actually be tameable with the, I mean, and the gearing reduction in the Charisma is not huge. Uh, in other rigs I have with significantly more gear reduction, you could get away with a 23 turn. So I, I don't have any winners or losers. Uh, I can't say, oh, don't buy any of these. Don't use any of these. I think they are all absolutely serviceable. I give a slight edge to the 55 turn because while it tops out at about two and a half miles an hour, if you're pure rock crawling, Obviously, this this is a motor most suited to it. And as you can see, the little... We got the nubby shafts, and then we got, we got this guy. Definitely more of a modern approach. And, you know, you could change the brushes. I can't... I can recall maybe once in my life actually changing the brushes in a brushed motor. Uh, motors to me are something that you use until they don't work anymore. Then you get another motor, especially when it's $15. I think it would probably cost what seven, eight bucks for a set of brushes. 
uh, and they probably won't come with springs and you'd want to replace the springs. So you're, <laughs> you're going to spend the cost of the motor in uh, springs and brushes. So I don't know if rebuildability is necessarily a selling point with any of these. I, I still say, you know, everything else be damned. Uh, the sport tuned felt the best to me. Like in that intangible driver feel, I, I got to give it to the sport tune. I, it is the most expensive $18 versus 15 and 12. But, uh, I think geared down and I think in a lighter rig, I think if you've got something, maybe shorter wheelbase, right? So you're looking at like that four pound area. I think it could be great. This guy was just, he was definitely the, the RS 540 was definitely in the middle. It was, it was, it was lukewarm. I didn't feel great about it. This one had the good torque. This one just had good snap. It felt snappy. So if I was going to spend under $20 on a 540 for a rig weighing definitely less than six pounds, which is about where this guy is with the body on it. I think he's just right around five without the body. So drop another pound and any of these would be would be perfect. I think I, I think today I learned that a 540 motor is good up to about five pounds. Four pounds, even better. So I, uh, if I was going to give a recommendation, I would say buy a 550. But uh, I don't regret any of these. Uh, and I, I, I guess, I guess the takeaway is, uh, I got to buy more crawlers and, uh, buy and or build some light, some small and light ones because I got a bunch of motors laying around, you know, anyway, thanks for watching.